business owner and philanthropist. Now, here's your host, Tony Busby. <laughs> yeah, we're back on the radio. Can you believe they didn't kick us off after Frank, like, cursing and all the crazy things he was up to? I tried to, I, I drove over here. Are you projecting on me? Let's ch- take it easy, Frank. <laughs> I, I, I drove over here with Frank. And we drove over, you know, the traffic is terrible. We drove over. And I was saying, Frank, listen, man, listen. You need to you need to simmer down, simmer down. I, it didn't change Frank a bit. Listen now, here we are talking with Tony and comma Frank. Understand <laughs> this: we have an incredible production team. Our production team has been working twenty four hours since last week to make sure that everything we say is accurate. We do not want to put anything on the air that is not accurate. We want it to be true. And correct. And moreover, and let me say, just so I can say, um, we want to make sure that that we don't say anything that's not politically correct, because you know it's a big thing nowadays, and we want to make sure that that we don't say anything that hurts anyone's feelings and it's not politically correct. So our our production team, we had to spend like eighteen hours going over what we were going to say to make sure it was vetted completely, so nobody got their feelings hurt. But in the unlikely event that and listen in the unlikely event that i say something that offends you or hurts your feelings blame it on frank and listen <laughs> if frank says something that hurts your feelings uh or is not politically correct which is highly likely blame it on frank as well so here we are talking with tony on friday afternoon and the good news let me tell you something great happened that we had a tumultuous week uh, in the country, in our city, and we're going to talk about some of the things that happened. But but if there's anything that good happened this last week, one of those things was talking with Tony was extended by an hour. Now, don't ask me why. Don't ask me why. I don't know. I don't know. But it got extended. And so let me introduce to you my co-host in small font, 10 font, Frank Spangley. Frankie, how you doing, big boy? I don't need big fun, man. I'm big, I'm big size and bigger than life. <laughs> he's, a, he's a very big mind. He's a very big mind. So, Frank, let me tell you. So I've been watching these, and we're gonna get we're gonna drill down into the into the actual details of this soon because I, I don't want to make light of this. This is uh there's something there's something going on in our country. There's something going on, and uh, you know, I was born uh, uh in the late sixties and sixty-eight to be exact. And so I didn't I didn't live through the protests and all the things that happened that that we thought we believed had changed our country for the better and had had hopefully uh, eradicated a lot of the racism that existed. And something's going on here. But before we before we get to some of those details, because some of this is uh, my guess is that some of my thoughts and my opinions may not be the most popular on the um, uh, for people that are listening to this particular program, but I want to say something about our police chief. <clears throat> and I've been thinking about this for an entire week. Uh, and I'm going to put my glasses on and make sure that, because I did a little bit of research. Art Acevedo is our police chief. Uh, Art Acevedo has been on multiple national programs where he has been speaking out on behalf of George Floyd, and, and, and God bless that. I mean, George Floyd, um, you know, and, and a lot of people like to talk about, oh, George Floyd was a criminal and this and that, and, and you may not like this, but guys, I don't give a rat's behind what his history was. There was no reason to murder that man. But let's, let's lay that aside for a moment. Art Acevedo has attempted, and Frank has given me the John to side, but has no, att- I'm, no, I'm not. Okay, Art Acevedo has attempted to become like the 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 god on bearer, if you will, for justice for for people that were injured or killed wrongly by the police. But l- let me tell you right now, you may recall eighteen months ago when I was running for your mayor, which I it was like a, a long walk on a short pier. <laughs> it didn't it didn't work out too well, did it, Frank? Well, I, I mean, it was entertaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <we got> <laughs> yeah. But let me say, 
let me say, it, when, when you have Art Acevedo, who clearly has decided that he wants to be the mayor of Houston, Texas, who, who is out there demonstrating in the streets, pretending that he gives a rat's behind about crime victims or victims of police brutality. And the truth is that he is presiding over a police department that has major issues. And, and let me just say, you know, the, one of the reasons that I, that I called for Art Acevedo's resignation um, when I was running for mayor, just one of the situations was when this guy presided over a police operation where they had a fake warrant, a fake warrant, where they lied to get an affidavit of probable cause with no body cams, no body cams, and busted into someone's house and killed their dog and killed the woman of the house and killed the man of the house. And then Art Acevedo, I went to the press conference. I was running for mayor at the time. I went to the press conference. And Art Acevedo, not once, even though it was absolutely clear that this particular police officer was one of these so-called bad apples, one of these so-called bad eggs, I went to that press conference and he did not once say, we need a complete review of the police department. We need to apologize to the Tuttle family that we literally murdered, that we, we can do better. And you know what is ironic? It's ironic to me, Frank, is that George Floyd, George Floyd is one of those individuals of many, many, many that were arrested and convicted based on the affidavit of the same police officer who was involved in that Hardin Street raid that I'm talking about. <clears throat> and yet, this chief, this so-called police chief, this so-called leader is out there marching on the streets of Houston and is on good, you know, whatever, these national news programs talking about police reform, talking about police reform when he had three or four police officers busted down someone's door who did nothing wrong and murdered them. And now he all of a sudden is the, is the guy who's carrying the, the flag for justice and reform. And here's what's worse for me. My brother-in-law is a police officer, HPD. That guy cares about the city. That guy wants to do the right thing. That guy is one of the good guys. This is a guy that when the riot, we, we, we expected there would be protests and possibly riots based on other things that had happened across the country. He was called out. He worked double shifts. And he's like, man, I just want people to know that we care about the people that we're trying to police. And Art Acevedo, if people knew his history, let me Google his history in Austin. Google his history when he was the police chief, police chief of Austin, where many, many sexual assault victims, they couldn't even process and would not process the, um, the, the evidence. Complaints. Wouldn't process them. And then he comes here, and all of a sudden, who knows? All of a sudden, this Californian, no offense to you Californians, but all of a sudden, this Californian, Art Acevedo, is the, is the God on bear. He's carrying the flag for justice. But when I called him out a year ago, and I called him out and said, listen, you murdered people. Not just, you murdered people of all spectrums. People of color, you murdered white folks, whatever the case may be, you are <clears throat> did not do your job. And you can you can have the loyalty and the confidence of the police and also have the loyalty and confidence of the people you're attempting to police, but you can't be a, hypo uh, a hypocrite. Frank, what say you? Well, I got this to say, Tony. I appreciate your comments, but I don't know. The, uh, I'm no, madder than hell, I, I got to say. I, 
and I'm not going to take it anymore. Watch the movie Network. But what I'm going to tell you here is something that made me madder than hell with regard to what the subject you raised, which is regard to the police chief, okay? And I don't know these details of all that. And I'm not a politician, and I didn't run for office, and I don't intend to. But here's the deal. This really upset me because what he said, he was yelling at a crowd, and he said, this is a majority-minority city. This is a majority-minority city. And the truth of the matter is, no. What may, where, where are you Estonians? And you know who brought that subject home? That subject that Art Acevedo couldn't bring home by using that kind of rhetoric. They talk about Republicans dividing people. What they're talking about, what he, how do you divide people more than by saying that? Can you imagine years ago when I lived here, if somebody got up and said, we're a majority, majority city. Are, are you kidding me? It's the worst rhetoric, but here's the deal. What made me proud was not what Art Acevedo said, because I found that to be absolutely offensive in terms of all the Houstonians, African Americans, white folks, yellow folks, all the folks, okay, everybody. What really made me proud was the family of, of, uh, of Mr. George, okay, George Floyd, okay? Mm. Because his family got up there and said, we're okay, we're good, with, I'm going to paraphrase, we're good with protests, but we're not about violence. Mm -hmm. And that, these are, this is what Houston is, what sets Houston apart from many other places. They will not be manipulated. And the Floyd family, and, and a beautiful family it was, his daughter, his, his, his wife, I guess, or former wife, mm -hmm. I don't really know their relationship, mm -hmm. but the family, his brothers, and I don't know their background. Every sinner has a past. I mean, you know, but, but, but they, there's redemption. Mm. And, and the truth of the matter is, in this circumstance, the Floyd family did Houston proud by saying that. And, they, and that is why Houston is set apart. And that's why Houston didn't have the kind of things that went on in other cities. No, I got to say, you, the, you, you've, hit it, you've hit the nail on the head. And, and I want to I wanna bring this issue home. There's no doubt that George... George's uh, brother uh, gave a powerful speech. Uh, we saw George's daughter, um, um, and we saw his family, and their march and protest. Uh, Houston really did us proud, and I and I got to give all credit to the Floyd family. I give them credit. I think that's the reason there wasn't violence. They could have very easily, on the steps of. Um, Houston City Hall, they could have said, burn this place down. And people people are so on edge right now. It would have happened. And i got to give great props and great credit to, to you know, rest in peace, George Floyd's family, where they said, listen, protest is all, all good, but um, looting and violence is not. Let and me, can I answer Yeah, you? yeah, of course. Let me add something here. i got to say this because I'm also proud of this. We have a great group of, of African Americans in this city that have made, you know, you talk about make America great. Well, these African Americans didn't say, I'm not going to make America great. They said, we're going to make Houston great. And they have. Okay, they participate. They are great business. We're going to take a little break, Frank. We're going to take that. I want to take this up. We'll take it up again. We're going to we're going to spend another segment talking. We got two hours now. We've extended the show. We're going to take a little break. If you want to talk to us, it's two eight one five five eight five seven three eight. If you're waiting, just hold on a little bit longer. Talking with Tony, comma and Frank. We'll be back.
I'm surprised you went there. Dude. Well, stay tuned. than ever before. Come learn, see how at buildersacademy.com. In class, on site, online. Buildersacademy.com. Start your mornings with a... Here we go. Oh, 7 to 9 a.m. on AM 700 KSEV. Hey, Craig Watson. Craig Watson, are you listening right now? If you're listening, call in. We got so many calls right now, but... Before we take a few calls, uh, you're talking with Tony on Friday afternoon. They extended our program to two hours. How dare they? And let me make sure you're clear. You know, if, if, you, if you get your feelings hurt, we have a department. You just need to uh, uh, raise a complaint. If we're not politically correct, raise a complaint. If anything I say offends you, obviously blame it on Frank. If anything that Frank says offends you, obviously blame it on Frank. <laughs> so we, Frank, you were you were in the middle of a thought. You were like the whole break. You're like, oh, Tony, 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 Tony. Uh, I want to finish my thought. Frank, finish your thought. My God, man. Well, if you don't appreciate it, I know the audience will. Oh, okay. Well, okay, let's okay, so here's the deal. No, because oh, yeah. I'm very serious about this. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is a serious point. I'm not. I'm not just talking my emotions here. I'm talking. What I really believe. I want you to talk from a point of reason. I'm going to talk from a point of reality, not okay. not necessarily reason is in the eye of the beholder. All right. But I'm hear telling it. here here it comes down. Okay. Yeah. We ha like I was saying. Now we you know you're wearing a red hat, but go ahead. We it doesn't matter what kind of hat you're wearing. All right, all right. It, it, that's the whole point too. If you you know I just said we had great African American people in this city that have shown us the way okay no, i agree with that and let me just say this i'm talking about uh, we have great and they're democrats great african-american judges many of them women in fact most of them women okay and they do a great job and you're we're sitting on a station that's basically republican and i've said this before and i'm going to say it again we don't vote for parties we vote for in my view people OK, and you could vote and there are Republicans that you could vote in there and they're globalists and they'll sit at the country club and they'll be all ha fine and happy and they won't wouldn't be able to look a small business and give them a fair shake in the eye. And they wouldn't be able to take care of the people that, you know, work hard every day. And those judges should not be voted against by many of us or the, the community that's listening here just because they happen to have a D in front of them. And just like Republicans shouldn't just vote for Republicans, Democrats shouldn't just vote for Democrats if the people aren't doing the right thing. And that's one of the things about Mr. Floyd. I find it absolutely offensive that the Democratic Party, which I told you that the times I have voted for, would actually send Joe Biden down here and desecrate Stop. this matter as being some kind of a political issue. And have him come down here when they're having the funeral next Tuesday. They should let that family and let the people that were the friends of the family and and basically not make it political. And Republicans and Democrats should all celebrate the fact that the Floyd family said what they said. And Mr. Floyd, regardless of his background, good, bad, he has some problems. Who doesn't? <laughs> who who on this radio station can say I haven't been a sinner? I haven't I haven't done things Listen, wrong. No, no, you yeah, you said it, and and I want to I want to piggyback on that because before we take a few calls, <clears throat> there's no doubt that I have had my own personal problems, and I think it's wrong. I think it's 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 misguided to. When something happens to somebody and it, it is a spark plug for change to spend time talking about, oh, well, he was this and he was that. No, no. Guys, listen. That's not what we should be doing. We should be focused on what happened and how often does it happen. Not trying to denigrate or vilify somebody who was literally, and I hate to use that word, but I'm gonna, I watched the video, murdered. I hate to say it, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe he has a defense lawyer that can prove to a jury otherwise. And 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 you know, I don't think this radio show is going to be the show that you know going to be used 
uh, up in Minnesota uh, to convict him, So, to convict the officers. So what I'm going to say is we are living in a, in, a, in a time, a difficult time, and um, I think we all should try to be a little more aware and I think that uh, we can do a lot better. I've said it so many times, and I know that we can. Let's take a few calls. We got a call from um, Line 4, Walter, from Huntsville. All the way from Huntsville? Uh, Steve, our producer, Steve, do we have a call from Huntsville? That's not refreshed. Pre- refresh that because uh, we want to we want to see who's calling. There's so... We got last week. We got so many people saying, "Hey, Tony, the line was busy. There were enough. There were enough lines, et cetera, et cetera." So we need to refresh that. But let me let me say another thing. Um, and I'm not going to keep going off on Art Acevedo, okay? But it's clear to me, Frank, and I think everybody that 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 pays attention knows that Art Acevedo has decided this is his this is his jumping off point where he wants to be the mayor of Houston. This Californian wants to be the mayor of Houston. He wants to go out there and, 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 and talk about police brutality um, when he presided over a situation where George Floyd was convicted based on a false affidavit. Let's just let that sink in. Let that sink in just for a moment. If you want to talk to us, 281-558-5738, 281-558-5738. I want, to, I want to drop some facts on you guys. I know you're listening. I know you're, um, you're probably in traffic. I'm sorry. You know, that's, that's Houston. Um, but I want to drop a few facts on you. Um, these police officers from Minneapolis um, are going to be um, – tried they're going to be charged as they've already been indicted and they're going to be tried and and if you look at the Rodney King trial you may remember back in 1991 Rodney King um, was a uh, an individual who was stopped and who was pulled out of his car and was um, beaten and you know the cops say that he resisted arrest and we can argue about what happened but you know, Rodney King, as you know, is is, is who has died. He's 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 no longer with us. But uh, it led to the what we all know as the L.A. riots. Um, that trial, just so you know, and Bo is walking over my my paperwork. But um, that trial was moved to Ventura County, and all of those officers were acquitted. Did you know that, Frank? I did. And I'm going to tell you, uh, Amadou, uh, Amadou Diallo, who lived in the Bronx, um, was shot and killed on his doorstep. He was shot 41 times. He was unarmed. And, again, he was, uh, the officers were in the, there were four, I think four or five officers were charged in the Bronx, but the case was moved to Albany. And guess what? They were all acquitted. Okay, yeah, man, but I don't agree with you on a lot of this. I understand. No, these are the facts. I understand what the facts are, but I also understand that there was Mr. David Doran, who was who was, uh, you know, I'm just throwing I'm just throwing out facts. Defending his seventies. I I understand. You cannot you cannot justify. I didn't know. See see, you're you're being triggered. I didn't justify anything. No, but you cannot justify. Uh, what happened to Mr. Floyd because it was horrific. No, what do you mean justify? No, no, let me What finish. are you talking about? I'm going to finish. Okay. Why, you cannot justify what, what happened to Mr. Floyd. There's no defense in my mind for that officer. My point is, <laughs> is that that trial will likely not take place in Minis- uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul. Well, it can't because, because you, I mean, it's the way our system works. It will take place somewhere else in Minnesota. Okay. okay. Well, what happens in this country when those four officers are acquitted? 
I don't think that anybody in this country will acquit that office. Someone would say that about the Rodney King trial. Somebody might say that about the well, Amadou Diallo we're trial. We're going to see. This is it, it's a different country now. Okay, so I don't I don't think that you're. I'm gonna just see telling that. you. I've watched. I've listen. I'm not. I'm not advocating any way. I'm just I'm just a, a presenter of facts. I, I get those facts. So what do you think about it? Well, I mean, I think I think that you could never acquit those guys in the Rodney Well, King they got acquitted. But I didn't see the evidence and I didn't sit on the jury, okay? But what I can tell you is I want to know why there isn't also an outpouring for David Doran, who basically was a 77-year-old retired police chief or captain whatever right, he we'll was we'll be back and then we're going to take that up we're going to take a I break i know that we're going to take a break talking with tony call in 281-558-5738 i promise we're going to take your calls bye They sell over 900 homes a year, and they know every inch of the buying and selling market in the greater Houston area. Call the Matthews team. I chose them as my realtor, and you should too. The Matthews team and REMAX Legends, your realtor for life. 281-440-7900. That's 281-440-7900. If you're worried your friend may be struggling, remember, you don't have to be there to be there. You can say how while you will get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You could chat on the game, kick off your flip flops. You can ask on your couch while you binge watch. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at seizetheawkward.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. KSEV. and grow your business, join the great team at KSEV and its loyal audience by calling a member of our family. I'm not really joking. Anyway, all right, we, we have so many calls. Like, uh, and I was talking to Frank over the break, and we need to. I promised you that we were going to take your calls. So let me. We're going to take uh, the first call, uh, Jacob from Houston. Jacob, what say you? You, sir, had an average husband. Uh, I'm from the Ad Council on mental health and uh, suicide prevention and anxiety depression. Well, I belong to this clubhouse on the St. Joseph Clubhouse. Yep. And at okay. the St. Joseph Clubhouse, they have helped me gain a job, uh, a temporary job, a part-time job. Okay. A job at Gorman Uniforms. 
that's and, uh, that's that great. That's what I do. And well, I, tell I me the tell me the name them. tell me the name of the organization so I can promote it. Okay, it's called St. Joseph Clubhouse. St. Joseph Clubhouse. Thank you. That yes. is an awesome call, Jacob. I appreciate you. Thanks for your call, my friend. And I appreciate your support of our show. Uh, let's take uh, the call from Jared on line two. Hello? Yeah, j- yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Hey, I had this. Jared? We have this little screen, so I can hardly see the screen. Uh, and, of course, Bo is walking around like, a, like an idiot. Like, I mean, he's just like, doing whatever he wants. But what's going on today? Well, you brought up a great point. What I wanted to touch on was some of the media and how they're kind of distorting things. But you brought up something in a hyper-local sense, how we have a sheriff kind of distorting things. So I wrote a little bit of notes here. The topic you kind of brought up with the sheriff is we don't have a way to truly hold people in his position accountable. Are you talking about the sheriff? No, let me, let me, let me, let me, I hate to interrupt you. You mean the the police police chief chief or the sheriff? Police oh, chief. I apologize. The police chief okay. of Houston, the yeah, one yeah. you referenced. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's no way to have any true transparency or accountability for the average person. Yeah. There's no way to track their tenure, like you said back there, um, back to his roots in California. And with the media, what they're showing us is quite a lot of division every chance they get. But what's truly happening, in my opinion, is America's coming together and uniting. I, uh, you know seeing, what? And, and and you're Jared, right? Yes, sir. Where are you from, Jared? What, what part of Houston from, are you from? I'm from Houston. Um, right now I'm on the a lead side of Houston. Okay. Well, let, uh, thank you for your call. And let me let me just comment and frankly have a different view. But I, I hear you. Um, I think this is an opportunity for us to to do something good, to advance the cause. I mean, l- l- and, uh, Frank and I were talking um, on the way over here, and uh, Frank picked me up at my house, and, and I was like, Frank, do you remember? And, of course, Frank's been a, a lawyer longer than me. Um, I'm, I'm literally only 40. Okay, I may have lied, but I'm only 40. But Frank's like 20 years older than me. No, 15. Uh, just chill out, Frank. Just chill out. <laughs> well, I want you to speak the uh, truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. I want you to be uh, real. Yeah, yeah, be quiet. But anyway, <laughs> my point is I have represented people who obviously injured working people my entire career. And I have seen – now, let's be clear. I mean, my skin, the melatonin in my skin is not black. I'm white. And so I can't pretend to understand – why you know how somebody who is is black how they go about their lives but i can say this and and how they're treated but i can say this i've represented a lot of folks uh discrimination cases and injury cases and it's something that frank we we've had to deal with we've had to like understand and try to deal with now that's not to suggest that we understand um, no, no. Com- we can never know what it's like to walk in the shoes of an African American. Right. We can't know because we don't do it. Just like we we can't know that walk in the shoes of other people. Right. And and you know that's a very I say it's a humanitarian principle. You always you shouldn't judge anybody because you don't know what it's like to walk in their well, shoes. Well, that's a, that. What I call that is the I call that the uh, Atticus Finch rule. You can call uh, it what you want. I, that's call, what I, call. I call it common decency and common sense. Common friend. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and, and so, anyway, so your point is well taken, and uh, we're going to take another call. We're going to well, take it from Jacob. No, let me, let, let, let me no go before we take Jacob. Let me Jacob finish stuff. up on yeah. Jared here. Because I promise a lot of calls we're going to take. Yeah, yeah, we got time. But let me tell you this, Jared. I totally agree with you. It's a time to come together. And the way that we should be doing this, rather than politicizing it, like I said, with Joe Biden coming down here and Al Sharpton and all these other people. What we should do is get David Doran's family, the fella I was talking about, and the other fella. They, these are all African American. Okay, well, what, what no, let mean, me finish. What do you mean by David Doran's family? David Doran's family, seventy-seven-year-old, uh, form uh, retired police chief who was guarding and helping his friend who owned a pawn, P A W N shop, and he got shot, and and he has five children, and he has ten grandchildren, and he got shot. Okay, 
during all this commotion that went on, and not because of the Floyd family, because of the agitators, and we're going to talk about it, Antifa and all the rest of it. I'll get into that. But what I'm trying to tell you is we should, if we truly walk the walk, what we should be doing is having the Floyd family and David Doran's family and the other family of the people who were shot in the rioting holding hands with all of us, Democrats and Republicans in line. I bet you saying, $100. I bet you $100 that George Floyd's brother with, um, would agree with me. Yeah, would agree with that. And somebody needs to do it instead of it being politicized with Biden showing up, babbling Joe, and all the rest no, of that. No, Joe's going to show up. Yeah, I mean, he's going to show up. It's a political stunt. OK, and what I'm saying is it shouldn't be this sacred moment where the country could come together shouldn't be degraded by this kind of activity. The families of the people. So let me ask you, are you, you you're against Joe Biden, I'm assuming? You know, I, I know Joe. I mean, I, I know uh, for years. I just don't think he's capable to run anything that at this point in time in here's his my, life. Here's my question. And I, I'm just going to throw this. Give me out another there. candidate. Let me I'm going to throw this out there. And, I didn't and, marry Trump. I mean, he happens to do. I mean, well, he, you're wearing his freaking hat. Well, but, he has yeah. a he has a beautiful wife. Why would he, Why would he want to marry me? I'm you're a, wearing I'm his a, hat, Frankie. You're yeah, wearing his yeah, hat. Yeah, because it, what does it say? No, and it's not his hat. It is his hat. No, it says "Make America Great Again." It does, no, it's his hat. No, no, I it, don't care about that. He it might, is a, he, everybody knows that's his hat. No, Stop no, it. You, you're you're politicizing it. No, I, I'm not. You're wearing his hat. No, it's not his. Yeah, it's, it's my his hat. hat. It says "Make America Great Again." Yeah. When I say "Make America Great Again," it's "Make America Great Again" and for all Americans. Where what what part of America was great before you wore that hat? Just I'm just curious. America was great. Was the, it when I was when it, was it when I went into the Marines in 1990? And was that when America was great? Oh, was, when was it was. great when I got had to go sign up for the draft? I don't know. I'm asking you. You're the one wearing the hat. I'm not wearing no hat. I America no, has always been great. Okay, okay. Then why you had to make it a great again? Because it got it, well, you don't saw tell why. Me. I, you're you're having a hard problem. No, I'm not. You've seen why it hadn't been great. I didn't say a word about when it. you got an economy that wasn't doing anything for mostly in the, in the minority under Obama under the minority communities didn't get any particular I'm outreach. Just asking the question. I'm just telling you. When was America not great? America wasn't great for them. The Who? unemployment, African Americans under Obama, and I voted for him. And 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 America America wasn't great when we took away our values. We don't have values. We got to go for what it. values are you talking about? Oh, I'm going. What values am I talking about? Yes. Infanticide. How about that? Huh? The <laughs> the Virginia governor wanting to kill babies that are like already out of the womb. Am I okay with that? I no. Don't know. I, I, well, listen. you're damn right. I'm not okay with it. It's murder. That's murder. Killing a baby that's already born. Just like it's just. You know, I'm not saying women don't have a choice with their bodies, but when you advocate extreme positions, that doesn't make America great. That makes America. That makes America what? And we might as well be the same as the Chinese who kill baby girls. Okay, why don't we just do that too? We decide baby boys aren't good anymore because they don't like males, and so they're going to kill all the baby boys. Why don't uh, we do that? that Frankie, I Frankie, we're going to take a call. We're actually Jacob, hang in there. We're going to get your call next. We're going to take a call next. Talking with Tony, and yeah, you know Frank is very passionate, and you know, so is Bo. Bo is. Crazy. We'll be back. Refresh that screen. Um, you already talked to Jacob. And Amanda Orr is one of the callers. She said she's she said you're expecting her. United We Stand. AM 700 KSEV, the voice of Texas. Press F5. Engine like
I'm surprised you went there, Dan. You so Well, stay tuned. of them trying to say this stuff about that. No, I hear and you. And I understand I police uh, police brutality, and a lot of these guys are, uh, you know, that get involved in that are sadists or whatever they Frankie, are. Frankie, they wouldn't like anybody. Frankie, Frankie Okay, Frankie, I'll calm down. Frankie, Frankie, listen. Listen to the buzz. Why? Listen to the buzz. <laughs> the reason I win all my cases is because I can talk to you, Frankie. Now, stop. Listen. So, we got this crazy Amanda Orr. Yeah, she wants to. Uh, no, her not call. her. She's not. No, crazy, we're going to take her call. You see, she's trying to represent um, the Harris County Republican Party chairman. We're going to take Amanda. line to Amanda or Amanda. What do you have to say for your client? Well, hey, first of all, well, I want to say hi to you and we'll Frank. Say, and well, uh, well, here's what I'm going to say. Hey, what's up? Now, how do you? Okay, you have a uh, you have a client. Mm-hmm. Who uh, quoted Martha Luther, Martha Luther King Jr. and then uh, had a banana in the um, whatever? So, what's your response? We'd love to hear it. Well, I, I mean, I think you've seen his response. I, uh, I've seen it. I've seen it. But okay. what is your response to it? Oh, you want to know my response? Well, okay, wait, I, I, actually, Amanda, I would like to know why. He can't call in here and tell us what his response is, and he would send you, who's a, obviously you're, you and I are friends. Mm-hmm. What? Why he couldn't? Because he didn't have enough time. He didn't. He was so <laughs> he's so bu- he's so busy. He can't call <laughs> into my radio show. I, I mean, I'm sure he had no he had no time because he's such a. What does he do for a living? I'm just curious. What is he like a? Uh, 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 he must be a, a doctor curing all cancer right now. Why you would are he? Me no, I just want to know why this guy, who's so important that he could not call into this show, and he let and and obviously we love to hear from you because we all love you, but oh, why okay. is he not calling in well, himself so he could listen? Even Frank has said, "What the hell is wrong with that guy?" He gives a Martin Luther King Jr. quote, and then he has a banana, and then I'm not I'm, I'm not Republican or Democrat, so I don't really care uh, about that. The, and I'm that not co- either. Yeah, neither of us. But but I'm surprised that he would p- throw you out there to the wolves because we are wolves. Let's be clear. Are so you, what's your you, yeah yeah what's I recall, your I recall you calling me a pit bull at one time. You're so a pit bull. Can, so why is your client? Why is your client the so-called soon-to-be uh, Harris County Republican Party chairperson? Mm-hmm. Why can't he, he didn't have two minutes to call in? Why I'll tell you why he right? doesn't have two minutes to call in because if he called in, I would eviscerate him because he needs to step the hell up. And my guess Are you is, let me talk? 
Yeah, you I'll let, let you talk? At some point I might, but since it's oh. my radio show, I may not let you talk. He didn't let but me I talk like either. I like talking to you. I All right, like go ahead. Go ahead. Friends. Go ahead. All right, let's hear your let's hear All your right. best argument on his behalf. All right. So, number one, I know it's little old me, and it's you know you'd rather talk to him, but as you can imagine, so why did he call in? He's making a lot of phone calls right now. Oh, really? He, There's one phone call he should sick. make. So I'm the guy that ran for mayor. I'm the, one of the biggest donors in this town. Maybe <laughs> one of his first calls should have been to me. Go ahead. Okay. Maybe his and first then, call should have been to Joe Biden when he was making fun of the Pakistanis up in the. Up all in right. Well, that's a world. different issue, Frank. Yeah, you're yeah. Off when topic. he called up, well, that other Frank, guy. Frank, you're going off topic. No, hey, Amanda, no, I'm go not. ahead. Amanda. He called. He, he tried to call the monkeys or something, and that's what we're. That's what he's trying. That what's the implication there? <laughs> so him and Joe. Frank is about right. to die. <laughs> him and Joe ought to start a party. <laughs> He, Joe could be running for president, and this guy here with the banana could be running for vice president, and guess what? They're going to be president of nothing and vice president of nothing because there's no room in this society and in, in, in our Amanda, city and in our country Amanda, for that is, kind of thing. The truth is. And the, you just got to apologize and there's go on. Absolute, wait, have you not seen his apology? There is absolutely no room Let's in the it. Republican Party. Let's, okay. Let's hear. Let's hear the let's hear the apology because he could be on the show to, to give his apology, but, but instead, who, who would write okay, that to begin wanna... with, Amanda? Who would write that to begin with? Who would even think that and do that? It's just not right. Amanda wouldn't, okay, but her so boss you would. You wanted you wanted my answer. Yes, we did. And my uh, as to why uh, he would do something like that, and let me just tell you, he will never be doing anything like that. <laughs> Everyone. I has wonder why. <laughs> Maybe if he's doing a commercial for Chiquita, but that's about it. <laughs> Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. And Amanda, I love I love everything you're saying. Part. I love everything you're saying, but, but the he truth is, say it well. Oh yeah, well, he might want to learn how to say it well <laughs> if he's going to be the supposed leader oh, of the Republican oh, Party of Harris yeah. County, the the fourth largest, maybe the third largest county in the country. So, you tell him. Amanda, and, and listen, obviously I know you, and you and I worked together when I was running for mayor, but the the guy that you're working for is not that smart. Am I right, Why? Frank? I don't, Frank. Know, I don't know anything about the guy. All I know is some idiot must have had to post something like that. It wasn't Amanda. It wasn't I Amanda. know it wasn't Amanda. Some idiot had to post that in the middle. No, he posted it. I know, but who the heck does that in the middle of any time? He's the same guy that put a, a – he's the same guy. That, and there's a lot of his posts that are dumb. Yeah, well, let him go down there and have a case in front of the people who really know what they're talking about, the good citizens and now, judges. Now, let me ask you something. Go ahead, Amanda. Man, I'm I giving Amanda her chance. You- you are from Atlanta, Texas, right? Oh, what a, don't, don't, try to put, don't try to like, get me into I'm this. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just giving you an example. But you have a lot of country sayings that I have always loved. Yeah, okay, that's good. And you want to say bananas and all that stuff. I get you. I get you. But He's a Brooklyn kid who grew up in a Catholic household. Oh, he's a Brooklyn he guy in Houston, Texas. Yeah. Okay, I don't like that already. No, no, that's not right either. I came down here from from up north with nothing but my brain and my one suit, and I would go to and I went to Woolworths and ate donuts. But I sure as heck didn't flash a banana when I'm speaking about Martin Luther King. So I don't go for that at all. That's offensive. Well, you can let me. Y'all can let me finish because I I know how to talk just as much as y'all do. I know you do. I know you do. But when you grow up not being allowed to curse, you come up with, you know, Ned Flanders on The Simpsons saying all kinds of silly stuff instead of curse words. Yeah, but he's not going to be chairman of the Republican Party. Amanda, Amanda, (laughs) Amanda, I've always had great admiration for you, but. Your client. You know, this is the exact reason why Donald Trump doesn't get along with the institutional Republicans, because they do dumb things like that, just like when Romney said he had a book of women. Amanda. Well, that's brilliant. You, you Amanda, we love you. Not Newt Romney. Listen, Mitt Romney. Frank, Frank. Amanda, we love you, but thanks for your call. Thanks for your call. Let's take uh, Kevin. <laughs> you Gems like it, are the Bo. problem. Bo likes it. Kevin. What do you got? Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. All right, All right jump, Kevin. Let's try it. Steve. Let's try Steve. Hello? Hey, Steve. 
Hey, I just want to say I'm a huge fan of yours, Tony. So thank you for giving me an opportunity. Oh man, that's so cool. Thank you very much. What you uh, got? What you got going, man? Real quick question for you. Um, I'm not sure if the public is allowed to see the collective bargaining agreements that the union has uh, for the police. And How about the firefighters? Yeah, do you think if the public has an opportunity to, to, to see these collective bargaining agreements that, well, I, I guess the point I'm trying to make here, Tony, is, you know, this this, this guy, Kroll, who was the head of the, uh, the union up there in Minneapolis, he had a little bit of a history himself, and, and the cop involved here had like nine, you know, sanctions before internally, and they were never never uh, fired. And so I'm wondering, you know, they, they I'm guessing these, collective bargaining agreements have these internal uh, dispute resolution mechanisms, but I don't know if they're transparent and I don't know if they're, you know, if they're really, if, if they're really holding cops, not, not all cops. I'm just saying, you know, the cops. No, have you're right. Added, man. Uh, you're right. You're, you're, everything you're saying is right. You're, you're, I think you and me and Frank are trying to figure out like, um, is there some sort of, procedure or whatever where people who uh, uh, cops are being held accountable for their actions listen man I'm, I'm with you yeah but I'm mm. not for d- doing away with the police department no okay? obviously not well but, no but they are in Minnesota well I guess well, in, in, in Minneapolis I don't, think anybody wa- I don't think anybody wants to do away with the police department but keep in mind the Houston Police Department wasn't even unionized till like 1947, and all that time before that, they were not a union. No, so I hear you. No, you're it's, you're, it's a, you're totally you're right, and, and, I, and we're working through this together. I don't even know the the right answer, but we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break, Steve. Yeah, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. But that is a an excellent question. Excellent question. And it's, it's
Well, stay tuned. Welcome to Talking with Tony here on AM 700 KSEV. Straight talk from a decorated Marine, successful lawyer, business owner, and philanthropist. Now, here's your host, Tony Busby. Hi, guys. We're talking with Tony. And we need to get serious. There's a lot of things going on in our country. Frank? Yeah. What do you think? What I think is, when you asked me a question earlier, Tony, and I, I, I didn't answer it fully, and I'm going to answer no, it. No, go ahead. Okay, you asked me what makes America great. It's not, it's the, that statement, what makes America great, is respect for our institutions, our respect for, for our rule of law, our, okay. respect for, our respect for the World War II monument, our respect for the Vietnam monument, our respect for the church. Uh, 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 what, are you, what are you saying? Though? What I'm trying get, to say, I don't get it. I don't what, get that, I'm tr what I'm trying to say is we just don't tear down where we came from. Are you saying it's been torn down? It's been attempted to be torn down because there's a movement in this country, this Antifa movement, which, which is a fascist communist movement, okay, which seems contradictory, but it's not. 
yeah. and they want to create total chaos in this country. And you know what? There are a lot of our enemies which are feeding that like a bellows on a fire. And I wouldn't be surprised if the if the Chinese and the Iranians, uh, I'm talking about the you know Ayatollahs over in Iran, aren't all feeding that. Why? Because they all can get a better deal if they can make our country weak again. And our country's not weak now. We have a strong military. We have respect for people. We have pe- we have uh, programs that are reaching out to the. Af- I'm just listening. Brian. They have Go ahead. programs that are reaching out to, to the African American communities with regard to investment. These these private par- private public partnerships. We have done some prison reform. We, we're trying to do a lot of different things in this time period of three and a half years. And you would have to be absolutely. You're talking about the Trump era. No, I'm talking about, yeah, these three and a half years that Trump had with all the stuff going on, it would be. It, Why look, are you so in on Trump? Because I think that the guy. No, 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 I'm going to make sure everybody's clear. I'm giving you the opportunity. And I voted for Obama Why and are you so in on Trump? Because he has performed. And performance is what Texas is about. And performance is what Houston's about. And performance is what America's about. So you about. like Trump. I like performance. Put another guy in there. I think Bill Clinton performed. Be honest with you, I think he did a good job. I, I think he I, did. I was a big Bill. I was a Bill yeah, Clinton and I th- I think that Obama. We both were a big Bill Clinton. I supporter. think that uh, Herbert Walker Bush performed in some ways, and I think that and I think that Obama was the right president. Okay, at, now after go all back that. to what you're saying. You think that we we have to we, we want a great country and a culture. It needs to be a culture, which it always has been, of multiracial, most multinationality. That is the strength of America. And it's not tearing it down. And it's not sitting there, like, you know, wallowing away, looking at a screen and talking about we've used the wrong word. You know what? I, I, that's not what America is. America is about performance. And, and Lord knows the, the, the white and community, the African American community right. and the Asian community have and every other community, the the Muslim community, all of them have See, made one, America great. One, one of the promises that I made for this show and it, obviously this show is bl- blowing up because people love this show or they love to hate this show, whatever they they I, it doesn't matter to me because I I honestly the, the, to be honest, if you love this show God bless you. If you hate this show, God bless you. It doesn't make it doesn't change my life. But I want to talk to Sharon on line one. Sharon, what do you got to say? Hi, Tony Frank. Thanks for taking my call. Um, first of all, I'm glad, Tony, that you reviewed the history on our police chief Arcevedo. We need to pay attention to these things because that guy is a real scumbag. And I'm so glad you reminded us of <laughs> some of his history in the Hardy Street raid and everything. It, it was oh, just, he was out of control. But go yeah, ahead. And, 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 and he's I, never I, said I'm sorry. Well, but I all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he's a protester. But yeah, go ahead. Well, I hope you're going to keep beating that drum. Oh, because, I will. I will. But yeah, I'm, good. Okay, we need to we need to keep hearing that. And the other thing is, um, I agree with Frank. Uh, Joe Biden. Oh, my God. You're agreeing with Frank? Now, listen, Joe Biden coming to Houston for this event is going to desecrate our city. I totally agree. Uh, I, I thought the same thing came know. to my head when I heard that he was coming, and I thought, oh, no. Well, let me just say this, Sharon. It's not only, it, Sharon, it, thanks for your I call. don't say it desecrates the city. I disagree with that, the way you phrase that. But what I do believe is it desecrates the 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 non-political aspect of the unity between Republicans, Democrats, and black and white. No, and I love the fact else. that I love the fact that the protests were all kinds of different people saying we got to do better with the way that stuff happens. And it was desecrated voice. by the rioters, as the Floyd family said, and we cannot let's tolerate try, that. Frank, let's try Kevin on line two. Kevin, okay. what you got, man? Okay, gentlemen, hopefully this time the call works, yes? Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Wonderful. I'm so uh, sorry we, if you had waited a long time, but come on, give me what you no, got. It's, it's okay. Give me uh, what you got. Both of you are lawyers, which means you have a high respect for the rule of law. Well, I don't know that I'd go that far, Kevin, okay. but you can <laughs> Go, Kevin, go, Kevin, go, Kevin. I'm assuming. I make a big assumption. That's right? a big assumption. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's been good now, to yeah, us. Oh, shut up, Frank. Let Kev talk. Let Kev talk. Our current DA. 
Kimog and her ilk, uh, all the assistant DAs, and the judges that came in with her, don't share that, um, that, that, that rule of law deal where you take each case as it comes and you look at the law and, and determine what's going on. They're letting felons out. They're letting killers out. How do I know they're letting killers out? It's because one drunk driver they left out killed a woman and her kid. And we got it on video. I'm not making this stuff up. It was played on one of the local news stations that they let out a, a drunk driver who went on and became another drunk driver who wiped out on camera a family. Well, okay, never Kev, be the same. Kevin, what are you saying? What do you what is the what do you, saying, what do you want to tell us? I'm saying that the Democrats have this black box ideology that they look at and they say, well, you're the aggrieved class, therefore we're going to cut you some slack. And the problem with that is it doesn't look at what they've done in the past. It doesn't look at them as an individual. It doesn't look at the law. It looks to their black box ideology. Mm. And that's what they're using. They're not using Frankie, a what do you say? clean. What I say about that is with regard to the criminal justice system. Uh, Kevin, yeah, thanks for your call, man. With that's, regard that's to good. the criminal justice system, <clears throat> I believe – and I'd strongly believe it's absolutely absurd when they're letting people out of out of jail that have committed these kinds of crimes. I don't agree with that. I disagree with you with regard. And they, I, I'm talking because there are criminal and civil judges. I don't really have any experience in the criminal court. So I'll put that aside. I cannot really comment on that. But I can tell you on the civil side that there are Democratic judges that have come in, even though it was when this Democratic slate came in that are the are excellent with regard to taking care of small businesses black white yellow any color and and also with regard to individuals i will Be- say this and, 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 i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to you want to gonna, chime in there if Tom? you don't mind yeah no i don't mind since it's my it's your freaking show. show i think i'll chime in <laughs> well, it's your it's your dog too but it's sitting on my yeah, lap yeah well yeah but i will say this <laughs> i will say this the courts of harris county and I've been. But you got to distinguish, Tony, between Frankie, cr- criminal and civil. Frankie, let me go. I don't. I. I know nothing about criminal. That's why I'm helping you out here. And a lot of people <laughs> know that. And if I can, if I can be. Uh, a, and you hope a, not to. If I can help people <laughs> for a positive change, uh, in the criminal courts, I will absolutely do it. I think I obviously have the ability to to do that. So if you represent somebody in the criminal courts and you need help. Uh, I will absolutely help you if you think that your um, that your client is not being treated fairly. But I will say this: uh, in the Demo- in, uh, Democratic, House, but in the civil courts of Harris County, things have changed. There was a time, and uh, listen, I, I, I went through it all, and, and obviously I'm not a person of color, but I went through it all where I represented um, many, many people who were injured and who were people of color who I believe, and I always said it, and Frank, we talked about this, we didn't get a fair shake, and we fought for it, and we we I l- laid awake at night thinking about it. But there are some good Republican judges. No, no, there were. There were. There's and, no doubt about it. And, and, and they also saw justice. It's Ju- not a Republican-Democrat thing. That's my point. I never That's said, what I'm I trying to say. I never said it was a partisan thing. I've always said it was a humanitarian thing. You vote so anyway. for people, not parties. Stephen, we're going to take a break. All right. We're going to take a break. Tony Busby, 6 to 8, talking with Tony with Frank. Frank's crazier than hell. <laughs> and we're going <laughs> to... We're going to take a break. I know we got we got our calls are so awesome. Thank you for calling. Uh, 281-558-5738. We'll be back soon. Is it refreshing now?
Well, stay tuned. So we are back. Um, I just was uh, texting with Francis. She said, Tony, get yourself together. I, I, I don't even know what to say about that. Um, all right, so we're going to take some calls. We promised to take some. Miguel from Houston, and what he wants to talk about is America was always great. Okay, Miguel, wh what does that even mean? So no, no, no. He he didn't he didn't take the notes right. Okay, well, tell me what you got. All got right, there. I was going to give you why America needs to become great again. Okay, Used go ahead. Used to be great. Yep. It became bad. We had World War One and World War Two against socialism. Kennedy's Democrats were versus commies. Yeah. Now the Democrats are turning commies. Hmm. Where do you live, Miguel? Uh, in uh, <laughs> Bear Creek area. <clears throat> Bear Creek. Okay. Well, Frank. Okay. Thanks for your you call, want Miguel. Me to address that? Frank, what do you think? What I think is that the Democratic Party has abandoned the people. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, and I think that. that the Republican Party. I'm not sure that's true, but okay, go ahead. Uh, I think it has. I think it has because it's abandoned the basic things that ha that were America. They they they. What is the the what is the American values? What I is told the you the rule of law, respect for respect for what World War Two and World War One. <laughs> yeah, like, but that's like 1940. It man. doesn't matter, man. This is 2020. It what doesn't matter. About? Okay, it, go it, ahead. Respect let's, for. Let's caring. hear. Listen. Let's. Hear Hear what you think. The communist, okay? What, what communist? Tony. What are you I, talking I about? I, I, I know I know you're not totally tuned in, but us. Oh, I'm, I was tuned in. No, what, no, but uh, us mere mortals, uh -huh. we see that the, the fact that, that communism, and I'm not talking, and now it's communism. What are you talking about communism, man? I'm talking about Chinese communism. Okay, Chinese. Okay, okay? Go ahead. But that's yeah. not really communism. It's basically totalitarianism. They want to stare. They want what to. What are you so scared about? They're gonna. They want to tear down our institutions. This country will never fall from the outside of the walls of no, the. I believe that of America. Our downfall will be from the inside because of guys like you that fought, Me? that fought for the country and continued to do so, and many of which were wasted in stupid wars. Stupid wars, just wasted. And that's why these generals that came out and started talking about Trump, they've been in endless wars. That doesn't make America great. What makes America great are the hardworking people of the country. What makes America great are values on family. What makes America I great— I don't know what the devil you're 
talking about? You, yes, you do. I don't. Well, then, w- we look, just listen to the... Listen I'm to, listening to you. No. Just keep talking. Listen to what the other side is saying. Other oh. side? I'm not on the side. I'm not on the side. When I say... Well, I'm saying... I'm listen. not on a side. Okay, listen to what the Democrats are saying. Uh, uh, the modern Democrats, not the ones who were for the working don't man. Don't talk about Joe Biden. Because Joe Biden, I don't know... Look, what the hell look, he's saying for the working man, for the union and stuff like that. You can debate it one way or the other, but they stood up for the working people. They stood up for the country. That was one aspect of it. OK, right. but the truth of the matter, the truth of the matter is now they have there are no values that are respected. There are no no values of America that are respected. The rule of law, the Constitution, none of the values are I respected. I don't think that's right. right? I do. I do. Okay, let me let me be clear. If you are somebody that was discriminated against in your workplace, I'm for you. No, Frank, stop for a minute. If you're somebody that was injured uh, wrongfully, I'm for you. But I don't understand what you're talking about. You're like some coming up with something I don't understand. You're like, like going off. I'm on beyond some the courtroom here, man. I represented, uh, you know, many injured people. Hell, you were the law clerk in courts that I was trying cases in. I don't you, understand why you're so bad. I'm mad because they're tearing apart this country. Who is I, they? These, you keep saying that they. The people who are politicizing an event that was tragic, like Mr. Floyd. Okay. Like I just said, and listen to me clearly. I'm here. listening. I'm I know my audience. The my audience, best. I'm sure, needs to listen to me clearly. What we're talking about? Why the heck don't we? Didn't we have an outpouring and and a basically coming together of all these other and mostly black injured police officers and the Floyd family to say this is wrong. It's all wrong. There shouldn't be unarmed black men. There's a federal judge that I've tried a number of cases before that sits right in Houston now. And he he told a story, of, and he's a Harvard graduate and all the rest. And he told me from the bench about how he was afraid to drive at night. That's because he was going to get stopped and what would happen to him. And I've okay, heard that. what did you do about that? What, what, the, what was what your response to that? about it? Yeah. Me personally? Yeah, you personally. He I, told you about it. That's right. What did he do personally about it? He's well, in a position of power. I'm not. I've represented African Americans, um, white uh, white working people, and and companies. I'm not for one side or the other. I'm for f- small companies. Why are you so mad? Because this country is dominated by large companies who pander to to global empires and don't respect the institutions that are the only ones that stand between us and oblivion. Because we are, we are, we are graced by God. This country is the shining. Is this hill. really your position? Well, I wouldn't be saying it if it wasn't. Do you think I'd be saying this on the radio if it wasn't? I don't I, know, but you're you're. you're I don't know what you would be doing, but let, let's be. What I'm telling you, though, is it's not a matter of party. There are. You talking about political party? Yes. I think political parties are so out of. They are over. I agree. They are over. And, and a, I think George Floyd and George Floyd's family would agree. And, of course, and what I've about David to, Dorn? I, I don't know all the details though. I don't want to go. Shot. I know the details about. I know the details about George Floyd, and I know the details. And what about all the people that are killed in Chicago every weekend? Okay. Black on black crime. Now listen. What about when, that? When, when you say stuff like that, a lot of people who who rightfully so would say, "Look, Frank, we're talking about George Floyd, who yeah, was who I'm was not, suffocated or killed." I get by that, a, and that's wrong. That's wrong. The guy ought to be okay. Like, well, if he's let's co- stay if, in our lane. If, if, you can't. No, there's go. no lanes here, Boo. All right, all right. Well, I I don't know about that, man. I think there well, are lanes. No, I don't know. There's no lanes. You can't say George Floyd. Well, I can say George Floyd. Yeah, you can say. George I can say Floyd. George Floyd. And I, I can say it. I, I can say George Floyd's name. George Floyd. George Floyd. George Floyd. And I don't. And if you want to say about his criminal history, okay, I didn't fine. Say anything about I know that. you didn't, but I, you can say about you know he's he's this and that. I said but nothing. I about watched, it. and we talked about this. I watched that video, and that is absolutely when I talk to my children, 
Yeah, I know, but that doesn't mean that the guy was a racist. He could have been a nutbag sadist. I don't know what he was. Well, what, whatever he was, if he committed murder and they prove it, he ought to get the electric chair. The good chair. news is, the good news is, Frankie, the good news is we're talking about these things. You Absolutely. See what, you see my friend. point? I do. Because we weren't talking about these before. And the sad thing is, is George Floyd died. And I saw. But this is the uh, problem I got, Will you listen before. I will listen. Would you listen for a minute, please? Please? Maybe. Yeah, probably not. (laughs) There were some videos from George Floyd talking about young people that he was trying to be a a mentor to and, and trying to be. He's a beautiful man. Well, I, I'm not saying he's a hero. I didn't say he was a hero. I'm saying he was killed. Absolutely he was killed. killed. But so was David Doran and the people that the rioters killed. And what are we doing about that? And who's like saying that that is wrong? And I think the my Floyd question. family my is question. saying that. As and a, I respect the Floyd family, and we you, should bring bring them all together. I love that. And as the, and, and I wanna, Republicans and, and Democrats, and arm in arm. And I would never give Sylvester Turner cred, street cred. But I got to give him cred. Houston did a, did a good job for the Floyd family. Do you agree or not? I agree the Floyd family did a good job for the well, Floyd family. Floyd I don't family. know about what the mayor did for the Floyd family. I know that, that, that the Floyd family was the most, a very dignified, God-fearing Floyd family. Yeah, they true. said they believed in God and they, were, they, and, they, and they should, and they showed it. They walked the walk. I don't believe in people who say they believe in God and don't walk the walk. But these people were a beautiful, a beautiful example of what we should be as humans. There is no way, if I were George Floyd's brother, that I would have been able to be that. Because that. they believe in could, God. But I couldn't have done And whether it. you believe in God or I not. I couldn't have done it. I'll be that, honest. I whether you believe it. in God or not, that's up to you. But if you really believe in God, you forgive. Just like Jesus forgave his enemies. All right, I got to change subject. How much time we got to go to the break? I got to recognize our sponsors. Chad Pinkerton. <laughs> Frank is like looking at it. Chad Pinkerton Law Firm. Pinkerton Law Firm. He's the lawyer warrior. Let me tell you something. If I had a major issue and I needed help, I would hire Chad Pinkerton. Well, you better go hire him. He is one of the best <laughs> lawyers in this town. Chad Pinkerton is one of the best of the best. Uh, this is the guy. We love Chad Pinkerton. He is our number one sponsor, obviously. We also have Limone, uh, Limone Shoes, Lemonade Shoes. That's, that's it's Italian. It's Limone. Don't be, don't be, don't well, be. Well, I, I know. I don't want to be uh, anti-Italian. Well, but yeah, no, no, no. See here. Frank, he, tell there, me about Italian shoes. Well, I, I don't know. I don't have any on you, do. I, I got some. I got <laughs> Limone, some. Limone Shoes. Here. They are uh, incredible, great shoes. I mean, they are incredible shoes. I and mean, last week I told you, or actually two weeks ago I said, if you want to be like Tony Busby, wear Lamone shoes. Now, if I see you out and about and you're wearing Lamone shoes, I'm not going to be very happy. But Lamone shoes, they're some of the best shoes. They're, they're made in uh, Italy, but they're actually sold. And the company is actually a Texas company. And they are absolutely cool. Now, we're going to change. Um, Steve, we're going to go to break, and I want to come back. We're going to talk about the fire department. Tony Busby, Frank Spagnoletti, talking with Tony. We'll be back very shortly. Tune in. Stay in. We'll be right back. We've got to talk about the fire department because these guys are the best of the best. You're clear.
take more calls one of the the biggest um knocks on us was like tony you don't take any calls and i'm like well god dog it okay we're gonna try to take some calls so we have miguel from houston and we took uh, it. refresh it we g- wants to say something refresh it that's old oh it didn't refresh okay well let's take the next call then steve steve on the north side steve on the north side what you got man hey Speaking as a black man, runs his own business. Yep. Y'all really need to get somebody in y'all corner that's black that's going to tell you exactly what's happening. Because y'all are way off the off the mark a little bit, but y'all y'all missing the main point. Okay. Is the law do not get prosecuted when they do wrong. Politicians don't get prosecuted when they do wrong. That's injustice for everybody. Amen. So, therefore, when when Frank says what he's saying, he can't tell you because he's frustrated. Yeah. And when blacks, when you go to the black community and the police officer don't respond to what you're complaining about and ask you for your ID and try to take you in for calling them. Amen. So, therefore, you, you can't say that they believe in the police officers, and they don't believe in that because they see it don't happen. Next thing, let me get on Sheila Jackson Lee. And, oh, and, you're uh, going to uh, Sheila Jackson Lee now. All right. You can take that. You can take that woman and go anywhere and put her somewhere that don't have nothing to do with America. Her and them, them two two uh, Democrats got up on that stage and tried to politicize that. They thought they was gonna go against Trump when they made that that statement. Yeah. What did they do? They didn't even acknowledge it. They was about to cuss out because I already have had to do it because she can't take my child and pimp my child when I pay for private school for him. And then she want to say that, you know, but look at, check this out. We tired of being tired. Well, tell me, seriously, people, I, wanna, like I want me, you to tell everybody, I'll, listen, I want you to tell everybody, uh, help us understand, man. What it, it takes a while. Tell me, under, just go ahead. I'm giving you the full on. Uh, you got the mic. Tell us. I want to hear it. I Democrats, he- Democrats ain't did nothing in how many years? Right. Nothing. But my people still votes for them and falls for that same okie doke. And when I tell them about it, they get mad at me and be. And I said, you can be mad at me all you want to. What do you show think me. about? But okay. show me. But Actors so you we watch we we all watch. But they're nothing. changing. They're changing because the, the folks. I don't know are, if the they're folks, changing. Yes, they are. I saw. They're not changing. They're not changing. They're, they're blowing changing. smoke up you again. Up your Nothing's ass. gonna happen to them cops. And see, I have people to tell me if it happened to my child, I'm gonna go after the family that did it to my child. Exactly. They tired of this. He gonna blow up their house, kill them, or whatever. 
but he because you gonna have to take action in your own hands today to can get you, them people up off of you. Can you help me understand? And can you tell everybody listening this because you got a huge audience here? When you saw George Floyd, and you saw that guy, and white or black, whatever, when you saw George lying there, literally with this cop, like doing what he did. Tell us, I mean, help us understand, man. I mean, come on, this is your, do you, you have a. What, what is there to say? Just, just, just imagine, say it, Tony. but just, just say it. Imagine, just Tony, say it. If it was your child. I know, I can't even imagine. You I know, would be it, so it, mad, I would like, it, like blow yeah, up. Yeah, but you, you know what I would say? It, I'd, 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 I'd want to go, I'd want to go what you just said, my friend. I'd want to go over and I'd want to confront his self. No, I want to confront the whole system. No, 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 no. Yes, no, I would. That's wrong. Yes, I would. Wait, wait, wait. If y'all don't change the law where the cops get the same time as people on the street, they cannot just lose their job and then go to the county and get another and job. And get another no, that's job. Right. They yeah, cannot, that's right. That's right. They cannot keep I agree with doing that. that to people, period. I agree White, with that. black, Jew, Gentile, it don't make a difference. I agree with you. And y'all need to, you two people right there, Buzz and you, y'all got the opportunity. That you have so the opportunity you, right now. Why don't wait, you wait, help wait, me? Wait, wait, help wait, me. Help wait, wait. me. I'm trying to. Let all me right, tell you. All right. You need to hire somebody that's of color, black, to explain and teach you that what goes on. You see it a lot. Yeah. But you got the opportunity, Busby, to take. Because I was going to. I voted. I would have voted for you if I voted in the city. I ran from the city because I don't like the the, the politics is coming up. Yeah. I'm from. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. I left there. Because it was Democratic run, a lot of bull crap that never got done, still Nick get out get done, and you still see they had the same problem. Yeah. Whether they black or white, Republican or Democrat. Exactly. They immune from the law. So when you get them immune, they need to change that stuff. And they need to get them out of there that's 65 and older. Because uh, they still with pushing the racist call. I would say fifty and older. I think I'd call that the swamp. I would say fifty because I'm fifty. I think yeah, I, I would too, but I'm fifty. I think I, I think what you're in, what you're saying here, my friend, is it's the swamp, and the swamp exists all the way from Washington exactly. D.C. to the smallest town. It's called See, the swamp. I, I voted for Obama, gave him eight years, and he did nothing. I voted Nothing for him too. Period. I voted then for him. Voted for it's going to make people crazy, but I voted for Obama too. And and you know what? He's a big disappointment. Now he want to talk when he had a chance to do something. When Trayvon Martin got killed by a, a neighborhood watching walk. What happened? Nothing. Trayvon Martin, the little teenager. I nothing. know nothing but happened. If it, was, if it was my child and y'all let him go, y'all gonna y'all gonna prosecute me. I understand. Y'all gonna prosecute me because I'm gonna make something happen. I'm sorry, man. Because Amen. That's the point of what is gonna have to happen is you have to take matters in your own hands and kill the cop who did your child wrong when you know it's wrong. Amen. You can't tell them no different. Man, I and I'm I I don't even understand. I I don't okay. even how the way that I can, like. You know, they keep talking no. about it on Facebook, empathize and all that. But I hear yeah. you. I hear I the pain. He's not looking for empathy. He's looking for action, Tony. He's well, you know I get. You know I'll have action. Well, then do it. Action, Tony. Yeah. Y'all need. To, you know, Quanell X. Yeah. I talk to him. Yeah. But we don't see eye to eye. I don't see eye to eye with a whole lot of people. But he's more closer to the rightness than than he do not like the Democrat Party. He do not like the Republican Party. He's for the people. That's yeah. I'm Some, saying this. Like I'm I said, saying, y'all need to get a round table here and get rid of that Hidalgo, that shit, that that police department. Uh, uh what's his name? Alfredo. Because yeah. he's pimping. This is he's the best to call, the Frank. Now. This is the best call we ever had. He's trying to pimp the people. Yeah. He's gonna get on the side and more. Yeah, you want to get on their side now when it's a death. Or you should have been on their side for right before then. Exactly. Because what happened to them exactly. two white people that got killed in that hood? Yeah. With that no knock warrant. Hard in the street, right? But yeah. I, Hell yeah. But and but and see, it don't no changes happen until it happens to one of their people. When it happens to them, then you want to make gun laws. Oh, look at God, look man. when they shot Jay, uh, uh, Griffin, whatever her name, Kathy. Uh, Yes, yes, yes. Were, the congresswoman. Yeah. All of a no. sudden, they 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 tough on laws. They gonna do this. They gonna do that. You are you, you know what I mean. This is a but thank you for do, your call. 
Th- thank you for your call. I this do is, know what you mean. Frankie, this is the best call we've had. It's a great thank call. Thank you for the call. It's a great call. And 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 it's that's exactly why people are protesting in this country. That's exactly why people are upset. And I am upset too. But it's I, a question of bringing the people together and the people come together because the the, the destruction that happened as a as a result of uh, Mr. George is is is, is George is, Floyd. Listen, George Floyd. People want to attack George Floyd. Like, I'm not. Nobody's attacking George no, Floyd. People do though. There's but no reason not. to attack him. No, I want to say something. He's about a great it. Becky he's Valdez a, Franco his family's said. Great people. Becky, Becky Del, Valdez Franco said people keep voting for these same old, same old recycled politicians. Exactly. I think that's exactly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Let, let, let's be let's be honest about this. That's how Trump got elected. To be honest with you, let's be, because yeah. he didn't run he as was, the same old politician. He ran for he ran for nothing except president, and maybe people don't like it, like what they have right now, but. My point is that, w- and this, what are we going to get? The the same a forty year uh, the caller p- professional wanna, politician. I, I want to say this: the caller or that we or, just or, had, or Mitt Romney, you listen, know? Yeah, yeah, whatever. For Mitt Romney. Yeah, now he moved over to uh, Utah, and now he's a senator. But listen, the caller that just called, yeah, he was, was it raw, real. real, and honest. I get it, and that is. What I hope I am, and I hope you are, Frank. Well, I don't think anybody can say that I'm not. I hope you are, and I know I am, and and I feel the pain, and I, I wish I could do better. Okay, There's man. something I didn't do. I want to do better. All right, well, don't beat up on yourself. You know, you don't need to apologize for the past. You need to just look at the future. I want to tell we're going to get a little break. Steve, we're going to go break. We're going to come back. We're going to go a little bit of break, and I got something. When we come back, we're going to talk about defunding and um, the police department. (laughs) We'll be back. Uh, Frankie, chill, 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 chill. We've had um, play Marvin Gaye. Lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you like that. But listen, um, there's a few things that I, that I want to talk about. We only got that, uh, and 
obviously there's a lot of things that we, and of course we talked about it before the break um, about bad things that are happening but <laughs> there's a movement to defund and to destroy the police department Frank here's when I'm here's my suggestion um, or here's my question you ask me a question yeah do you think that there should be no police I mean say it do I think there should be no police yeah I'm just saying I mean that's what sure people are. sure there should be no police we should have like something like the movie escape from New York or escape from LA and just totally devolve into chaos and who will emerge whoa 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 whoa, whoa. people are saying the politically correct thing now is there should be no police, and there's like this famous soccer player who I she, don't give a rat's well, you know what yeah, about the, this famous says, soccer player. This famous soccer player You're says there should be no. You talking about that woman? Yeah, 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 yeah. The, no. She says there should be no police. She says de- I can't stand de- what her politics well, are. Well, no, Frankie, listen. No, now. I don't you're, need to listen. You're to incredibly me. politically incorrect at this point. I don't give a rat's listen, behind. Readers, listeners, friends, you're my friends, Frank. If anything he says um, um, makes you mad, blame it on him. Anything I Let say makes you about mad, the cops. blame it on Frank. In reasonable no, statement. No, go ahead. Go, okay? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Look, they're a thin blue line. These guys work for nothing. Guys and, and gals, Frank. You're being, again, you're being politically When incorrect. I say guys, I mean guys and gals, okay? We're all uh, we're in it together. You're not out there, Frank. Exactly, I'm not out there, and that's why I respect these people. They are the ones who keep us from being overrun in anarchy. And there are forces at work in this country from within that will manipulate the populations of this country. Oh, my God. You sound like a a, a, a conspiracy theory. No, it's person. not a conspiracy theory, Tony. This is the problem. I didn't no, tell I don't, I don't agree with it. An that. intelligent guy like you doesn't see it. but I see it. No. But- but they are manipulating these people, the people who placed the bricks out, the people who did all this stuff. What brick? There's no bricks, man. Yeah, there were bricks, man. I don't believe it. In New York and and in and in L.A. when they all were right, having let's this not get and Atlanta, and they the hell they were just they even attacked the CNN. Let's not get off track. Orders. Do you want to defund the police? Are you kidding me? People are moving to defund the police. I'm asking well, the question. Well, they ought to be. You're de- going off track. I'm no, paying. the people who want to defund the police ought to be defunded themselves. <laughs> and, and when and and when their houses get attacked, they don't get a 911 call back. Let me say. Let me be. They, wait, all right. You want to defund the police, Tony? When they attack. I didn't say I want. No, no, no. We're just saying. You want to defund the police when they attack your house? You want to do that? Listen. Who stands between you and and the mob? Listen. My house has been. Has been and who uh, came to your bur- house? Burglarized. And who came? Yeah, and my house was burglarized. Yeah, who came? And do I want to defund the police? Absolutely not. I absolutely the, support those guys, the police. Those men and, and women I don't who care. Do that every day are, and I'm gonna be are, honest. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it out ways, there. But not the rotten ones I'm who are throw abusing it, I'm a, people. I'm gonna throw it out there. I refuse and I reject the notion that that. The police department in any country or any city across our country is bad. And you can you can send me a video that shows that one particular police officer did something stupid. And George Floyd is the perfect example. But I still support the police. And I know that may not be politically popular. Every business, every, every. That may not be politically popular. And I'm going to tell you, I want. Every the organization officers, does the four, something the stupid. Four, the four police officers involved in George Floyd's case pr- prosecute the devil out of them. But please, for our, the, let me our tell you ability this. to have a society, we have to have yeah. we the, we have to have a police department. Yes. We have to. Come on, guys. And Let's sh- be smart and it, about and what we're doing. And it should not be nationalized because then it no. would become a political tool. No, it cannot be nationalized. Otherwise, we're going to devolve into the chaos of Mexico. And it does not It does not mean that we cannot attack and, and criticize how a particular police department and their record, specifically the Houston Police Department with the Tuttle case and many other cases and all the people that have been killed by the Houston Police but. And I say that, and my brother-in-law is a police officer, and I know that guy is not a racist. I know that guy works very hard to do the best Just like the men and women of the FBI didn't create that debacle where it was a soft coup against Trump. So let me say, 
when you're an idiot. It was the management. It's always the management. Just like an, the head of the Catholic Church had the problem with all the pedophile idiot, priests. If you're an idiot out there, if you're an idiot. And I'm a Catholic, and it's not the nuns who are working out there Frankie, among the poor people. Frankie, No, that's Frankie. the problem. You ask me why I, I'm mad? No, I'm mad too, Frankie. No, I'm mad about the institutions that have been, and this is why. You want to know why I, I like Trump? I like Trump because he was tearing down the in, the structures that were ingrained that were crushing the people. And, he, and, and, and it is what it is. Okay? I wished Obama would have done it. So let me ask you this. And everybody listen to this, and there's a lot of people listening. Do you really think that that we had no police department? We could just ask people to chill and not commit crimes like Sylvester Turner asked them <laughs> until they until the con- windows of my office were Frankie. smashed out. Uh, my, my office, my son's office, were smashed out. They were smashed. Now the funny thing would be like, oh, you, do you think you, that's funny? You think no, I don't think it is, but I think Sylvester Turner wouldn't think it's so. I funny. was so concerned about it, I want to put barbed Frankie. wire on my fence. Chill, 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 chill. And I live in the city of Houston, Frankie. right near you. Frankie, you don't live anywhere near me. Well, a Let's few blocks, clear. okay. Yeah, yeah, like on the outskirts. Let's be clear. Yeah, whatever you say, man. Okay, but my point is, <laughs> when when Sylvester <laughs> Turner <laughs> asked people to quote chill out. And not commit crimes. I agree with that. Yeah, I would love that too, but didn't doesn't happen. No kidding. And so I don't think defunding the police is probably the right thing. And and, and the I need right to make a thing. It's the most stupid thing I ever heard. I need to make a plug. Um, <laughs> there are many many people, uh, really great people across the city of Houston that are doing. And I know this is a. I'm sorry, guys. Who's going to protect the people in the small neighborhoods? Okay, I'm having a hard time with Frank. No, in, in, the, in the minority neighborhoods. Who protects those people? Who okay. protects them in their houses when the thugs are running on the streets? It's only the cops. Okay, Frank, are you okay now? Can I talk? I'm talking about black people, brown people. You can get your own security guard. They can't. Okay? I can go get my own security guard. They can't. You know, I was blessed by having a, by by being fortunate enough, and you were too, to be able to pay for our own private security, and we could act like Nancy Pelosi and eat our fancy friggin' ice cream. But they can't, and it's only that thin blue line that protects the poor people in this country. Also, there are they, there are rotten apples in there. They need to be weeded out. They need to be they need to be addressed. But I'm not listening to that stuff there. I'm not listening to defunding the police department. It's a joke. It's an attempt to destroy the country, just like all these other attempts. And I lived through the Vietnam War. I lived through all the protests. I lived through I lived through Vietnam. I went to friggin' Woodstock, okay? I get it, man. I get it completely. I'm uh, sorry, I'm done. Yeah, you kinda went off um tangent, but that's okay. I mean you can know you can do I mean the issue was defunding the police, and I think we all agree that that's kind of silly because um, most of us rely on the police. And um, but laying that aside, um, I got a few things I need to say. We only have a few minutes left, and we've had, we've taken a lot of calls. But hur- we're, hurricane season is upon us, and I would respectfully suggest that we are no <laughs> better prepared for hurricane season than we were prepared for it. Two years ago, if you agree, well, or you disagree, let me know. But I'm pretty sure that we have not done anything. And here's what's more concerning to me personally, because I did run for mayor, and, and you know, obviously that didn't work out. It, those of you that are listening, um, we have not helped the people. And, and remember, this is our tax dollars that were spent five billion dollars that are still sitting there, and four people, ten people at most, were helped uh, with our tax dollars. We're going to do better. I hope we do better. I don't know who's going to be the next mayor. Obviously, it won't be Mayor Turner. It won't be Tony Busby. I'm pretty sure it won't be Tony Busby. I'll tell you what Tony Busby will be doing. Tony Busby will be on this radio with Frank Spagnoletti, who's going off on these incredibly crazy tangents. They're not crazy, Tony. They're not crazy. When you say that, you're telling all these people that uh, that uh, they're really mad when that I say that are thirsting for this for this truth. That's not crazy. Well, we're gonna do something, and so my question is, 
how are the roads? Are they better than they were four years ago? How about our preparation for the next storm? Are we are we prepared? How about are we prepared for hurricane season? How about uh, how has this particular take a call. mayor? He's telling you to take a call. Yeah, we well, want to take. Okay, well I can't see because take uh, a call. The, Lorraine on line one. Yeah, let's do, Lorraine. We got a few minutes. Let's hear it. What you got? Hello, Tony. Uh, my name is Lorraine. I'm calling from San Marcos, and I wanted to tell you. That I was, I'm sorry about the mayor race. I was rooting for you um, when you just now talking about the hurricanes. Um, I was rooting for you because um, when Houston shut down the hurricane or the Hurricane Harvey, the 56 inches you got on the Brazos, you know, all that rain, it killed tourism all over Texas. Yeah. And small businesses were suffering. Um, and so it is important that at some point, hopefully, Houston. You know, it's addressed because when people would finally come to, you know, to vacation or whatever, they would say, and I was, you know, I had insurance. But Lorraine, Lorraine. Yes, sir. Get to the point. Let's go. Well, I agree. Um, I agree it's important. And uh, But initially, I've been waiting for 45 minutes. I've lost my train of thought. Oh, I'm so sorry because we didn't have the, our, 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 <laughs> it's our okay, stuff. It's okay. Yeah, I sorry. Too I was too much, about our, Frank talks too much. <laughs> Frank talks too much. Um, Art Acevedo. So, when he was in Austin, you know, I was working downtown, and he started this mandatory blood draw on Saturday nights. And all of a sudden, it was, you know, if you got pulled over, you know, for whatever reason, if you had a broken tail light or whatever, yeah, 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 you get yeah, yeah. pulled over, you yeah. know. So he started that. He's a scumbag. Um, I mean, even though it was important, but at the same time, you know, to curb uh, drink, you know, drunk driving, I think that was very aggressive. And um, and it, it just happened. You know, if you don't pay attention you know, to, to politics. Lorraine, I'm so the sorry. They're starting to, like, ah. run the, the – can you call yeah. back next week, please? I will. I will. Because okay, I'm so sorry need because – You uh, need to be schooled on China, too. I, I agree know. Frank well, Frank needs to know that. All right. Yeah. All right. Lorraine, thank, thank you, and we'll get back with you next week. Uh, talking with Tony. Uh, we'll be back next week. we got two hours now, and we're going to have a great time next week. And – uh, next week, call in 281-558-5738. Thank you, the George family. Thank you, the George, George Floyd, Floyd family. family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You, the most dignified people that I've seen on the public stage in 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 my lifetime. That is pretty. That is pretty amazing. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Tune in. Bye. You've been listening to Talking with Tony. Join us every Friday at 6 p.m. with Tony Busby.